So as we started the, uh, the introduction, every result, and I mean every result that we uh, get will always have an inf will always be influenced by our level of negativity or positivity. That's the way it works. And if you are in business, for example, sometimes you will notice that maybe things just don't work. I learned that you need to check into yourself. You need to introspect. And you are going to realize that you are not positive in your life. You are negative. You're thinking and feeling negative. And it's always easy to know when you're feeling negative. You will just feel that there is nothing good. You're feeling either depressed or something. And so it's easy to know that what is going to come up in your life, what you're manifesting, is not good. You're going to see more trouble. The way to feel, the way to notice that the future is not very good is in your thoughts, in your feeling. And so remember, we, are, we all have control of how we feel. And that is now what we are talking about. It takes the same old discipline. And it takes this idea of every time that negative thought comes in, we find something that we can bring in to replace it so that we don't indulge in it. And over time, that becomes our habit. And then what happens? We start seeing the results that we actually intended to see. That's why we love to say that results are determined by your thoughts and your activities. And we know that thoughts, everything that resides in our minds will be determined by our level of knowledge and our emotions. If we have negative emotions, results can only be negative. That's the way it works. I, I love to say also that the word emotion has that motion part, which means movement or activity. It is what causes things to work. So if it is a negative emotion, it's definitely going to drive things towards the negative. The converse is equally true. So let's, let's uh, open it up, discussion, comments. What is it that we picked or what is our experience? How do we always bring ourselves back on track? Or do we even notice? Do we ever notice <laughs> that we are off track, that something wrong is likely to happen if we dwell, if we continue in that particular rhythm, in that particular frequency? Yes. My pick out for the day first is this statement. I guess you're now starting to understand why being must precede doing. So there's so many, I, like I listened to so many interviews and there's something that Mike Tyson said, the interviewer was asking him, okay, so when did you, like, when did you know you're going to win this? And he said, I knew I am going to win it the moment I started thinking and seeing myself as a winner, I have already won it, you get me? So whatever you feed your mind is definitely the results that you're going to get. The other day, I think two days ago, I was talking to someone and I was telling this person, job in the Bible comes and says that whatever I feared most, is what has befallen me, you get me? So he fed himself so much with, uh, what if my children die? What if my children are sinning before God, so I have to offer an offering? What if this happens? What if this happens? And then because of that fear, that fear now opened a gateway for whatever he was fearing to come and happen in his life. So at the end of the day, uh, how you can bring yourself from the negative thoughts is more of what you're feeding yourself. So the Bible says that out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. You're going to speak what is what, what you're feeding yourself more, what you're thinking comes forward, what you're, what you're thinking 
comes from whatever you're feeding yourself, and then it's going to affect how you're talking. So you realize that people who, who feared COVID the most, the most, the most, the most, are those people who, are, who used to, to watch news and they're like, oh, how many people are dying? Oh, they're saying this number of people are dying. So they feed themselves with so much negativity. And in return, they start talking. Um, and in return, they, they start talking about dying, about them getting COVID. You get me. But at the end of the day, you'll realize that people who were not thinking so much about it, were not even giving it a thought, like, they're living their life. You get me. This is what I fed myself. I know that I am well. I know that there's no, there's no Egyptian disease that is going to follow me. Then at the end of the day, it didn't get to them. So being precedes doing for you to be successful, you have to, you have to be it first. You have to live it first before you be it. So Another example I would use Esther in the Bible. Esther was also Hadassah, this lady, the, the slave girl, the slave girl. For one year, he went through intense training also to change his thinking because you definitely cannot be in the palace as a queen and still have a slave mentality. No, you have to have a queen mentality think like a queen, then be able to get to that palace and rule as a king and not a slave. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. I love the idea that you're bringing uh, the example of COVID. I've said this uh, numerous times, that when, when uh, COVID was said to have come to the world, starting from Far East, and I could see fear uh, gripping people, panic mode and all sorts of things. I, I kept talking about the need to stay calm, the need to think that which we want, not that which we don't want. And my prayer was that the world would come to this realization that we can get rid of COVID in less than two weeks by just focusing on something else. And a good example is the locusts. The locusts were invading people until COVID came in and then they started working from home, you see. So, the, and, and uh, that is when I, I developed, I, I recorded some um, talk, a short clip on fear, how to, uh, uh, how to, or the truth about fear, that's the way it was called. Because I knew with this, more and more people are going to die, not because of COVID, but because of the mental COVID. And the same thing has happened to people who kept fearing that their businesses are going to be closed, or they are going to lose jobs, or all sorts of things. Actually, yesterday, I was, uh, I was uh, in some discussion about the same. And uh, I realized that, that there was a guy in our uh, group, one of my groups. He's got all sorts of vaccines, I think probably triple vaccinated, but still pushing for, oh, you need to keep everyone safe. Uh, COVID is coming back, you need to mask. And I was wondering, why do you feel unsafe and yet you are already vaccinated. Then what is the meaning of that? I do not want us to go to this story of vaccine, but I'm bringing in the element of fear. And uh, I, I was imagining, this is the same reason why some people, they already have uh, licensed, they are licensed gun holders. They are living in fortified houses. They live in fortified estates with electric fences. They uh, have security guards. And they have even the police post or whatever around them. But whenever they are meeting, they still discuss security. They still feel unsafe. And you wonder, why, where, where is the problem? And they are still the same people who, who have such insecurity problems. It is what we put in our minds. If we do not take care of that which gets into our minds, we are going to manifest it in reality. That's the way it works. 
I also gave a talk on scientific prayer, which is a little controversial to some other people who think it's against God's uh, 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 maybe command or against religion or something. It's never against religion. There is nothing that exists that was not created by the creator. So it's important for us to know that by our mind, some other people, uh, apparently, by the way, some of the people who are very spiritual, they will claim to be very spiritual, but they are always in the negative mode and they wonder why uh, things don't you know, happen to them. Then they take this side of God is, uh, God wants them to suffer so that they inherit heaven. And I don't think that is true. <laughs> if he's a loving God, he cannot a desire that we suffer, that we go through some predicaments in order to earn heaven. It cannot be like that. It doesn't go, or it doesn't rhyme with the philosophy that God is good all the time. You see? So we've got to know that a lot of our problems, we create them through that which we put in our minds and we allow to reside there. And so using your discipline, you come up with a method or a mechanism that you always summon to action. And so you become somebody who is disciplined and thereafter you are able to do what disciplined people are able to do. And so you become that which they become and that is success. So thank you for bringing that particular example it's quite timely. And I think part of the reason that uh, this Power Monday came into being was to we'll be talking about such. Great, great. Any, any other contribution on the same? The power of disciplined thinking. Yeah. Thinking is such an important job. We cannot leave it to chance, uncontrolled. That was also a text in that uh, particular reading. Yes, any other sharing? What caught your attention? Yes. Um, thanks very much for those contributions. Um, I believe that we also use this because I'm a mental health professional. We use that a lot in mental health. We call it co cognitive behavioral therapy. So we can actually find ourselves in a crisis which is self-made. Like you go and you meet somebody um, at the supermarket <clears throat> and in your mind, they seem to have ignored you. That happens a lot, yeah? But actually, uh, so you actually ruminate the whole day, the whole day this person didn't greet me, this person ignored me and all that. And later on, you're, you find out your whole day was spoiled because of the perception that somebody ignored you. And maybe the real truth was they actually didn't see you or they saw you, but they, 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 they were going through such a crisis in their life. So even if they greeted you and it was like very short and very, it seemed to be very short and that this person doesn't like me, this person is not interested in me. The, the best thing is to realize that you are not in control of other people's reactions. You're not in control of other people's behavior. You're not in control of other people's um, feelings or attitudes towards you. And once you realize that your sphere of control is only within yourself, the way I speak to myself, the way um, that uh, I interpret things, it's all, uh, it, it should be in your control. And the minute you realize you're totally um, unable to control other people's behavior, their reactions to you, and their, even whether they take care of themselves or not, then you, you realize that life is so much easier. And so we use that a lot. We try to, to talk to the, the, the people who come to us with those issues and give them the, the idea that maybe something else happened. Try to help them to see situations in a different way. And we're not here to be loved by people. We're here to serve God in our talent. And obviously when you're doing good, there'll be people who will uh, react negatively to that. 
So you can't be a friend of anybody, everybody. And the, the Bible verse at the end of uh, the letter to Philippians is some wonderful um, St. Paul's letter to the Philippians. It says that finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is gracious, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. So when we think about positivity, because I am a spirit, that means that God knew me before the creation of the world. I have a soul which consists of my mind, my will, and my emotions, and I live in a body. So my body reactions will be according to my thoughts. And um, I need to think positively about, okay, there's something called toxic positivity, by the way. Have you heard of toxic positivity? But so, when things, you're actually in a crisis and then somebody comes or you lose somebody and then somebody comes and tells you, by the way, it's better, it's all for the best. They're in a better place now. I'm not talking about toxic positivity because when somebody is in a crisis, you need to walk with them through the negative emotions and help them come out of it. You cannot just be there saying everything will be okay. Yeah. So when, when somebody is going through, a, I'm talking about actually making um, a positive effort to think about um, positive things and uh, how things can work out well. I think I've been a victim. I've been somebody who also used to think much more negatively than I do nowadays, thanks to Power Monday and other things. So during, yeah, during COVID, I used to watch, I used to make sure that I go to mass every day from home. And uh, I met this wonderful Bishop, um, the Bishop, Archbishop of Singapore, he's called uh, Bishop William Go. He always had a positive message and I still watch him every day. And so uh, surround yourself with positive people, identify positive people, stay away from negative people. And also people who are tox toxically positive, you know, people who come to quote the Bible when you've lost somebody and that kind of thing. Eh? We need people who can come and walk with you through your emotions. Thank you for letting me share. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. That's very beautiful. That's very beautiful. Yes. There is a way that when we do not control our thoughts, then we must be uh, ready to accept our reality because they form part of our reality. And I love to say that they actually form part of our prayer because we are told pray unceasingly, pray without ceasing. It is putting that in your mind all the times, getting to know that it is uh, your mind that controls uh, your reality. And uh, you've given us a very good example, which I love. Set your mind on these things. That is another translation. So that is what we need to set our minds on. Good. Thinking our thoughts, uh, taking care of our thoughts is a full-time job. It's a full-time job. That's part of what we read there in the text. It's not something we do in the morning that it's time to pray. Yes. And then we, we want to think in the morning only, in the evening only. We want to do it on Sunday. No, no, no. It's a full-time job. We must set our minds on things that are above, on things that are lovely, on things, on possibilities. And, uh, and uh, if we do not control our minds, we do not train our minds to f get to this discipline, our minds have a tendency to run wild. It's like a wild dog. Yes? Uh, or, or a goat. You can think of a goat. If you do not control a goat to where it should be, it will go everywhere. That's the way our minds are. And so it's got to be restrained and it's an active uh, participation. It's an active role that you must take. Taking charge. Whenever it's moving this direction, you bring it this direction. It's moving like this. For some of us who've done herding, herding goats or sheep, we understand better. You see, yeah, uh, I've done herding, I've also done fishing, so I know, I know the difference. 
<laughs> yeah, and I've done herding sheep and goats and cows as well. So I, I know how goats can be disturbing and that is what your mind is. If you let it uncontrolled, your mind will take charge and you will have a miserable life. So you must be in charge. And the moment you take charge and you show it which direction to go, it has a tendency to obey over time. You will need to do this repeatedly for not less than 21 days. And so you must, each one of us must have a, a formula that you use. There are several of them. We've talked of affirmation. Yes, you have some statements of truth that you affirm. You can always extract them even from the Bible, but that those ones become your prayers. Like, the Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Like our help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. Therefore means we don't really have to worry. And, uh, and uh, uh, like during COVID, when COVID was coming in, I shared this uh, with people, uh, Psalm 121 and Psalm 91. Yeah, uh, it doesn't matter what happens around me. And Psalm 23, those are very beautiful Psalms that can keep you up you'll never see most of these troubles that others see. And then, uh, and then uh, uh, there is also that element of counting your blessings and naming them one by one. Some of us also love putting music or there are statements or there are people who, when they talk to you, you feel uplifted. But somebody taught me, don't depend you cannot depend on, uh, you cannot put your motivation on others, that you will depend on others. They will disappoint you at some point. What if they are unreachable? <laughs> Their phones are switched off. <laughs> or they just turn it off because they say, so and so always talks only negative with me. Yes, so they say enough is enough. You always drain them. Because part of the formula you need to use is avoiding the people who drain you. You need to be fully charged. So that when you are going to people who drain you and you time, I can only take it for an hour. <laughs> After that hour, you switch to your mode. And you need to have what a friend of mine called filters. When I was talking to him several years back about news, that I don't watch news anymore because it's too negative. And by the end of the day, you can even feel depressed. He said, nowadays I have filters. I only pick what I want <laughs> and I've never reached that level of having filters because I know if something is repeated many times, it becomes a reality. Thank you very much. Yes, Daniel, we've missed you, Odiambolale. Thank you very much. Good morning. Good morning. Sebo. Good morning. Sebo. Sebo. That's a gr gr greeting from Kampala. I also missed you guys. And thanks, this topic is so, so close to my heart. In fact, uh, uh, I like the, the, what do you call it? The power of uh, posit positivity, positive mind. And I like even what uh, Eddie, say, Eddie said about the, the toxic, negative toxic, toxicity and also positive. Uh, when I was in Kampala, greetings from there. Uh, I went to I, I was at, I went to an island where my my late uncle was a chief. I had visited him 32 years ago, uh, and while I was there, uh, I was just seeing OPP because that place is just fishermen everywhere and women. And <clears throat> relating it to now, I could just see how out of all of them, maybe one or two can come out to be an OPP. Most of them are got. They get into that fish, that industry, and they don't think outside the box. Relating to talk about the mind, power of the mind. On my way there, you remember our colleague uh, Aloinosius invited me to go and attend the the Matters Day. I yeah. was there. I'd set my mind when I left Kenya that I was going to go for it. But when I got to Kampala. On the eve of the day, I watch TV, talk about toxic, uh, ne negative, something that is like negative, negative news. This one was not that it was negative per se, but then on the screen, they were showing live. They were showing these uh, uh, hundreds of people, thousands of people who are heading for the, to the venue. And then there are so many police with their guns. You know, Uganda is a police state. 
So you could see police in vehicles, police walking, and then they are showing us avunjas. So psychologically, I was not prepared for that. So uh, by the time I was going to sleep, I'd already switched off my mind that I was not going to go to meet that big crowd, and especially the police. Because me, I was there on a holiday, and I was going to for my uncle's funeral, and I was doing my travel log stories. So on that day at breakfast time, I woke up early as usual. Now, now me, I'm watching the, the stuff from TV. And then after that, I just went about my my what? My, my business. And I found I was so, so relaxed because I don't know, I was just feeling traumatized by the number of police and their guns and all this. So I switched to something that would have been negative for me if I went there to positive. But now having breakfast, I have my control and environment. And then after that, I can I was able to do one or two things tour the town without having having been restricted. You no, know, when you go to a, a function like that, you're restricted. So that's the the the, the message is that we are who we make ourselves to be. Those many fishermen and fisher 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 folks out there, yeah, they were struggling and struggling. But how many of them maybe had a, uh, had a mind like that on OPP, that this is not it. This is just a means to an end. I want to make something out of my life. So uh, relating it to this, I think this is a very good topic that we must control our mind, the power of positive thinking. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, Power of Positive Thinking. It's a great book that was written by Dr. Norman Vincent Power, who is also who was also a pastor, and it's one of those books that has been uh, quoted uh, year in year out by many many people. Apparently, people quote it, but uh, you know, many people know what to do, but they don't do it. That's why we are talking of discipline. <laughs> you must make that choice that you're going to do it and you do it and you do it and you do it again and again and then it becomes part of you you see even after all this discussion if we do not make a decision to take deliberate steps to put this into action we will be the same and when i talk of personal development and power monday is about personal development the question is whether we are growing are we growing and uh, to know whether you're growing, you should check yourself maybe from January to date. Uh, what, what, have you become a new person? Have you killed the old person? We are told that we need to be born again. We need to be reborn. We need to kill the old self and become new every day. Morning by morning, new masses, I see, you see. So we, we need to be getting rid of that cobweb that negativity that old self and we are growing and becoming better people you see so if you can't see that growth in yourself uh, from january to date something is not very right and that might mean you're becoming like a library a library has all the books but does not read them or maybe let's say it reads but does not implement Yes, we do not just learn for knowledge, we learn so that we are able to become better. Yes, Susan. Morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, uh, when that uh, section of the book was being read, what uh, came into my mind was the knowledge. And then I was like, oh, I remember my experience. I'm a person who dreams a lot. In fact, if there's a part of my life that I need to work on, it's uh, understanding dreams and knowing how to interpret them. So at times they were like, they were really controlling my day. And I was like, how do I handle this? If you talk to this person, nobody knows how to handle the situation. Until I, uh, I mastered this, uh, the prayer of St. Michael the Archangel. So with that, whenever I wake up and I, I found that, oh, I was dream, having a horrible dream, I attack it with the prayer of St. Michael the Archangel. In fact, I don't even make the sign of the cross. I just start it straight away. And then from there, I get my peace. The day is never on, disturbed by the, what the dream was. 
then as time goes by, I came like, I need to evaluate how my day goes or why do I get such dreams? Then I said that, ah, I, I, those ones will consume my energy more. What is important is I've had the solution. The solution, the solution is wake up, find myself that I was having a horrible dream and I call the archangel. And then I tell, I tell God, thank you. And then the other part that I experience of uh, counter, uh, neg- of, uh, encountering negative thinking was, I'm working on a, uh, I'm working on a right path. I'm doing everything right. I'm thinking I'm disciplined. And then all of a sudden something negative crops in. Then I was like, why, why? Then I came to learn that uh, negative uh, thoughts or results come to attack the discipline that you are in, uh, I manage it because I always know I'm on the right track. Something comes to disrupt the right track of thinking or of action. I just say that I'm, I know I'm achieving this because if this would have not come at this moment, I would have not known how far I am to the results. So I've used that for most of the time when I'm on a track of action. And then something negative comes in my thought or uh, a reaction in terms of uh, something to handle, I always say I'm next to the results. So with that uh, click of mind, I'm next to the result, keeps me on track. And then it's like, that was just, I use that negativity to be an alarm to tell me you are almost to the result. You are almost getting through. And now with that, I get more energy. And I have used it several times. And I'm happy because it always uh, uh, make me know that I'm on track. Thank you. Beautiful. Yes, you found a formula that when you encounter a failure, you tell yourself success is the next, which is very beautiful. And uh, people in sales apparently need to be using that, that every no means next opportunity. And probably the next opportunity is the one for success. Again, by the way, it's good for us to note that we may want to avoid negative people while we are the negative ones. Yes, so we also need to know whether we are carrying negativity around so that people should avoid us. Yes, we are the plague. And uh, uh, sometimes when we are praying for something, it doesn't happen. Check yourself. You'll realize that you're complaining. You're complaining. How come it's not happening? How come I've been praying all this while and it's not happening? (laughs) It means you are really complaining. And God has a habit not to award complaints, <laughs> not to answer prayers of complaints. That's, that's what happened with the Israelites in the desert. They kept complaining, despite seeing everything that God was doing. At one point, they said, we want meat. <laughs> we were eating meat every day there. And then, and then uh, uh, God told them, now you will eat meat tomorrow. Uh, somebody said, Sasa, where, where will meat come from? Yeah, even if we killed all. But then they are trying to guide God, and that is what we always try to do. We try to uh, uh, advise the creator or the all knowing on a solution. And then we don't see it. And so we start getting uh, stressed. We start getting negative. Where can I get the money, enough money to pay these bills? And you start imagining. You don't have a way and you do not want to surrender and have peace in your mind that all things are possible. Uh, There is a a song I encountered so many years back and I loved it and I still uh, use those phrases. I have a dream. uh, I have a dream by Abba uh, Brothers uh, that, that says, I believe in angels, something good in everything I see. So when I see trouble, I tell, I can also tell myself something good in everything I see. If we choose to mine the gold inside that trouble, we will probably always find something good there. And, uh, and, uh, and uh, we, must be, we must put this particular formula into action enough times so that it forms part of our habits. And that's the way we develop that discipline in thinking yeah uh, great great thank you susan yes hasandi so um 
I was listening to Les Brown and, and he said that in his office, nobody tells him anything until at around, until, at, until after 10 a.m., why? Because he feeds himself, he has to condition himself for the day. So if you come at 10.30 and tell him, maybe this, this, uh, this show has been canceled or this has happened or this has happened, he's, like his mind already is built to receive whatever negativity is coming, he is coming to, he is being told, and then he is able to handle it with the right emotions. So that is not going to mess up his day because I mean, in the morning he was busy feeding himself with positivity. He was busy like building his muscle for the day. So I think, um, when we wake up in the morning, like for me, when I wake up in the morning, my mornings are my time with God, feeding on God, feeding myself, feeding my emotions, my spiritual life and everything just in preparation for the rest of the day. So I tend to believe what you do in the morning really, really, um, like really influences the rest of the day and what you listen to in the morning. So what do you listen to in the morning? Because you won't tell me that you wake up in the morning and then you switch on news and the first thing is there were three accidents on whichever road and whichever road and whichever road. First of all, that one has already destabilized you. So wake up in the morning, feed yourself, feed yourself, feed yourself. And then after that, face the day. And I kid you not, I kid you not, it works. Thank you. Uh, beautiful. Sweet hour of prayer. There is that song and people talk about sweet hour of prayer. We've got to know that there are two instances in our lives that are very, very critical. And one is just before we sleep. So it's not just in the morning, but also before we sleep, because that which we read and, and, and watch or uh, discuss or uh, uh, we meditate on just before we sleep is part of what is going to form what our minds will process the whole night. So if we dwell on negative things just before we sleep, we are going to have uh, our minds, our subconscious mind is more active when our conscious mind is asleep. And it picks lots of things. And that is when it will take to process most of those things that we've just uh, uh, talked about, or that we've just read or watched or whatever we've interacted with when we, are, when we are about to sleep. Now, the other one is when we wake up, how we set our minds, how we set our day, how we set our, our uh, we set into motion our day. It's a very critical thing. You wake up and you turn on Al Jazeera and you turn on BBC and you want to know everything that is happening around the world immediately, it's going to affect your emotions. We are emotional human beings. We are emotional human beings. Our emotions rule us almost all the time. And so we've got to guard those emotions. So when you wake up, you need to have some rituals. And we talked about this a couple of Mondays ago, including last Monday when we were talking about, uh, <clears throat> when we were talking about reading and all these other things. So what is your routine when you wake up? I personally don't visit some WhatsApp groups until it is late, uh, like four or three, or when I feel fully charged enough. And sometimes even when I choose to visit them, I don't want to read them. I go there to clear the messages because I know most of what is being discussed is negative. You see? It's about horror. It's about how bad things are, or things are getting. Uh, recently, I was discussing with somebody, people are talking about the rising cost of uh, stuff. 
I asked, have you ever heard me complaining? Because I was taught three things to avoid. Criticism, complaining, and condemning. If you want to stay constantly in positive emotion, you need to avoid the three C's. Don't criticize, don't complain, don't condemn. You must think very well. By the way, and today's reading uh, for us Catholics who do, who have daily mass readings, talks about don't judge lest you be judged. Because judgment puts you in a negative emotion and you want to be somebody who takes charge of his or her emotion. So meditation, you can do your meditation. People who do meditation or who understand meditation, a good time is when you wake up and when you before you go to sleep, you can always feed your mind. Throughout the, the day, we said you must take charge, not to accept anything negative to reside in your mind. In fact, for 16 seconds, you better catch yourself before the elapse of 16 seconds because thereafter it starts to manifest. Yeah, so meditation, reading, and all that, you need to take care of that. Otherwise, you realize that you are not in charge. And by the end of the day, what will happen is you get the results that you do not want. You will never live your dream. Our book says, live your dream. You will never live your dream when you are not disciplined in your thinking. Yes. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Somebody else would like to okay. say something. Daniel okay. Lali just said a thought. Can I? Can I? Can I just say something about Olale's thoughts? Why do some people have many, many dreams and nightmares while others suffer from insomnia? You see, uh, <laughs> I was talking to someone and this person was telling me that um, they mostly have dreams having sex with someone. And someone told them about all oh, spiritual husbands and spiritual stuff and everything else. Like, no, it's not about spiritual husband or spiritual what, no. First things first. First of all, ask yourself, what are you thinking about? Keep on thinking about sex. At night, I kid you not, you will dream you're having sex with someone. So this is what happened to me today. I think it's juicy. On Friday, I was talking to someone about thieves and we were just discussing and he was telling me how how there are people how how a neighbor of ours where I stay was mugged and stuff like that I kid you not tonight I dreamt about thieves and the guys came and I didn't have a voice to scream and everything and I woke up sweating my whole body was sweating I woke up, definitely I prayed. I mean, def the Bible says that my people will live in safe and secure places. So I just, like I declared that scripture and then I went back to bed. So as OPP has said, before you sleep and after you wake up and even during the day, what are you thinking about? What are you reading? What, your, what are you feeding your mind? Because most cases, dreams are going to come from what you feed your mind. You cannot be watching, I don't know, what, whichever documentary of denouncers killing people and war and what, and then you tell me that you sleep and not have nightmares, you're kidding me. So watch what you're feeding yourself, watch what you're feeding yourself, because by, by the very many times, dreams are just whatever you're feeding yourself. And that is why you'll see, children i mean at night when they when they are sleeping and then they dream most of them talk and they're talking whatever was happening during the day it's more or less a continuation of their day so in dreams nightmares whatever it is it is just a matter of what you're feeding yourself Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. I wanted to actually say the same, that if you watch horror movie, you cannot expect uh, sweet dreams. Uh, it doesn't work like that. <laughs> and by the way, by, uh, this is serious. I, I don't know how people tolerate horror movies and that becomes their, uh, their food every other time. We've got to know that there are four things. What we speak, 
what we hear, what we watch, what we read affects our lives. We've got to take caution. What is this thing that I'm reading, this material I'm reading? What is this thing I'm watching? So you will take uh, necessary steps to ensure that you are reading something that is in tandem with where you want to go. And uh, somebody has commented about social media. Uh, you see, for example, there are places you will only go and you read about complaints. If you listen to people complaining, you will get into that mode of complaining. What is going to happen is you are also going to experience those very, very results that people are complaining about. You see, so when the cost of fuel is going up, cost of oil, whatever, it's none of your business. If there is something you can do about it, do. Otherwise, it's none of your business. Yeah. Uh, you know, when we were growing up at some point, I think bread was five bob or less. And then all of a sudden it jumped to 10 bob and then 50 or whatever. And people kept wondering, how will people afford it? People are still affording it. And even if you will reach 500 or later, people will still afford it. So it's none of your business, what is happening around you. You focus on what you want and get to know that <laughs> there is a way uh, life works. If you if you not complaining about it, things will just work for you. Things will just work on your side. You will be able to afford everything because the Lord is your shepherd anyway. Yeah, is it too expensive for your provider? Imagination. What is it that you imagine? When you imagine stuff, that is a way of creating them. And that's why when you read things, you are going to imagine them. When you speak about things, we say uh, words, uh, the, the mind thinks in pictures. And so when you imagine, when you read something, you can imagine when you're reading a book, you're actually visualizing that video working, uh, uh, playing in your mind. So uh, the mind doesn't know the difference between what is happening right now and what happened a long time ago or what is going to happen. And remember that it always appears um, uglier in imagination than in reality. And that is something that will bring us fear. So if we choose to imagine things, we, let's imagine the right things and let's be sure that those are the things we want to happen in our lives. Because imagination is power. One Einstein, Albert said, imagination is everything. You, you imagine things, they come to pass. Everything that has ever been created. So imagination is a very good tool to bring in when you are dealing with your negativity. And I assure you people, you can practice this even for three days only and see what is happening. Practice it even for one day. Repeat the same. You will realize that something is drastically changed. That's the way life works. There is no any other way. You see, it doesn't matter. You can go for cashers. You can go for all sorts of retreats. You can look for God in the mountains. But if you do not follow this simple uh, uh, steps, nothing is going to happen because the law of gravity stays. The same way this law, these laws will stay. What you fear will persevere. What you complain about, what you think about and talk about will come about. So don't talk about troubles. Don't talk about all sorts of bad things that are happening. Don't complain. Please. Stay in the right frame of mind. And more so when you are, even when you are going to do a business, talk of your business positively. I have affirmations for my business and I keep learning others every other time. Not long ago, I learned that I, I, uh, I provide magical services for a magical pay. That, that makes you feel nice. You see, I later added another one that, I acquire wonderful customers in a wonderful way. I give wonderful services for a wonderful pay. And somewhat things just open and we keep living on and no complaints. Let's take charge of our minds. Anybody with a question, a comment,
before we close, we have one minute. Yes, I have uh, something to also share. Yes. Yeah, this is just thanking the group for your support and your prayers. Uh, I just realized thanks to Facebook that uh, my travel blog has been there for one year and I've written for, I've written almost 45 uh, blogs for of the, uh, the different destinations I've been to in the U internationally in Africa, in Kenya and institutions like Parliament, Bombers of Kenya uh, review, uh, Conference, among others. Uh, and that is where now this topic again, I, I just love your topics. They're so, so relevant and pertinent. Uh, the power of the mind. When I started this project, I, it was during the Olympic games and I, I was just wondering, I was just getting bored with watching Olympic games, seeing foreigners, I was not seeing any Kenyan winning awards and then you know all those sports of theirs. So <clears throat> I said, why don't I just try writing? So I started writing, uh, remembering uh, my trip to the United States to cover the Barack Obama's elections, 2009. And I wrote to almost 2,000 words that night. And since then I've been inspired and that uh, it just shows that our mind, we are those who limit our minds. There's so much we have in our mind. So those 42 uh, destinations, most of them, except the year Kampala and Jinja that I'm working on now, have been historical. And it just shows that if we put our minds to, to it, we'll be able to do so much. You can imagine this is just historical memory. What about now writing about what is happening now? Or for those who like fiction, ima imagination, the same thing you're saying about imagining about what you want to do tomorrow. Uh, so the mind is so powerful. Let us let, let us not be like. Let us not use it. Let us not allow it to be an umbrella that is closed. An umbrella is useful when it is open because uh, it will save you from the rain and also very hot sunshine. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Yes. So uh, next week we are going to discuss about disciplined focus. That is our next subtopic, and uh, we will. Uh, we will, uh, of course, read the text. Uh, for those who may want uh, the book, just side chat me. And then uh, uh, for those who are here and uh, you are not uh, in our WhatsApp group, uh, you, you can always side chat me. And uh, uh, if you'd like to be in our WhatsApp group for Power Monday, my number is there down. Uh, I'm typing it. And my name is there. Uh, if you had people calling me OPP, it's Otieno Paul Peter. 